you are watching Marv Albert conduct an important organizational meeting with members of his loyal NBC Sports staff. So many vital decisions to be made and such enormous respect for this creative talent. Let's listen in. From a journalistic point of view, I think we're on the right page. And I just, just keep up what you're doing. Uh, I thought there were some technical difficulties. Why does he have to go on like this for three hours every meeting? Work, uh, was really lacking. I can't stand him anymore. Uh, in that area, stage managing was, uh, was very good. If I can only get my hands on him. I thought that there were some other problems, but we'll go into that <laughs> at a later date. Oh, Czar, I have a thought. For the telecast uh, tonight, what I think would really work well if you don't talk until the second quarter. I, I, I think this, we've discussed it with the upper management. I, I really think that that way your comments will be eagerly anticipated. I, I think it could really set a new tone in sportscasting. Now, Ahmad, I thought your sideline reports uh, the other night were just excellent, but I have a suggestion. When you send the report back to me, would you just say, now back to my best friend, Marv Albert? Because I think people will really think we're close. That'll work. Well, why don't you try it? And now, back to my best friend, Marv Albert. That, great. You got it. All right, one more thing, guys. I told you about the Albert Achievement Awards home video, and I know that you're all very excited about this. We have all kinds of major personalities to introduce various segments. In fact, it's Charles Barkley. Watch this. I'm going to get him to take part in this. Watch this. Charles. 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 Oh, there it is. Okay. Hey, Charles, remember that Albert Achievement Awards video? Hey, I hey, I, did you oh. see me reading something? Don't disturb me. I, I, I don't you. have time for you or your stupid videos. I'm a busy person. I'm a star. And don't disturb me. Charles, uh, let me get this straight. Are you saying no? Well, we'll get things going with basketball. Tim Kempton with the good hustle and some difficulty getting back into the game. Dennis Rodman, known for his rebounding, comes down with David Wingate. Johnny Newman with a unique style of dribbling. Michael Adams on the move, right into Coach Del Harris, who was on the court protesting a call. Halftime entertainment. Watch the Knicks cheerleader on the right. Intermission during a Washington Bullets game featuring a gymnastic show. And out of nowhere comes an unexpected participant who quickly makes his departure. The latest in halftime hijinks. Spin the fan around and then watch the attempt to dribble. Chuck Daly has provided us with ups and downs. There was this mishap in New Jersey. Several years back in Detroit, a similar occurrence. But Chuck's most embarrassing moment, the time he ripped his trousers in Dallas. We had a, a, a player along who was a rookie who was injured, and I said, you haven't played much this year, but you're doing the most important job you're going to do this year. Go to my room and get these pants. Four coaches in the spotlight. Phil Jackson of the Bulls loses his chewing gum, and the television crew makes good use of instant replay. Mike Schuler being introduced to the media as he was named coach of the Portland Trailblazers, not a blazing star. Fordham University's Nick McCarchuk obviously did not agree with the call. <laughs> and get that man a towel. Louisville's Denny Crum. To the unusual, Mark West attempting to steal the ball from Vinnie Johnson and got more than the basketball. The Knicks perfecting the fly-by defense. Two players passing by Todd Day, who calmly hits the jumper. Michael Jordan with a slight problem, the fly taken care of by a concerned teammate. The next mascot, Duncan, with a nice pass, but the youngster was not looking, and a shaken Duncan rushed to his aid. Now to amazing long-range accuracy. High school ball in Dallas, Davina Barnes saves it behind the back and fires it home. Dennis Johnson from his own backcourt with this remarkable underhanded fling. 
Don Calhoun with the shot from three-quarter court, earning $1 million in a Chicago Bulls promotion and the praise of his fellow millionaires. Yeah, the first segment all went great. First part of that video worked terrific, everything right on schedule. Charles Barkley couldn't have been nicer. In fact, he said, any time I need additional help, all I have to do is give him a call. Right. Letterman? Oh, I, I know he'll take part. Yeah, Dave and I are very tight. He'll, he'll do anything for me. In fact, I'll, I'll check him out tomorrow. Hey, Dave, you have a, a minute? Hey, Marv, how you doing? Good. Uh, you know this... Mind if I sit down? Help yourself. The uh, Albert Achievement Awards, Wild and Wacky, doing yeah. a video. Right. And we're having various personalities introduce segments. I was wondering if you would take part. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. Ask me again. Dave, we have this wild and wacky right. Robert Achievement Awards yeah. video. Would you introduce a segment? No. <laughs> I love it. Your whole face just collapses. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. I I'll do it for you. I will? Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want me to do? Just introduce the segment. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for real big time home video sports excitement. Marv Albert, the wild and the wacky. Thank you, Dave. Our baseball segment starts with pitcher's problems. Mike Morgan of the Cubs with the slip pitch. Houston's Daryl Kyle trying to perfect his fielding technique. Here's a comebacker to Terry Mulholland. The ball gets stuck in his glove, so he throws ball and glove to first for the out. And how about Montreal pitcher Brian Barnes clearing out the cobwebs? We had our share of fly ball adventures. Ben Shelton and Al Martin of the Pirates combined on the deflection to make the catch. Carlos Martinez with a drive to right field. It is off the head of Jose Canseco for a home run. At the All-Star game, Putt Rodriguez with a shot to left, right into the padded wall on the fly. Ozzie Smith with the shot down the line. In left, Kevin Mitchell comes over and does it barehanded. College baseball in Nebraska. The ball is hit deep to left. Apparently, it's not a good idea to drive so close to the ballpark. I usually don't go down that road. I usually go down 14. There was a train coming, so I went around the other way. All I was doing was just driving by, and uh, all of a sudden, I heard crash. The hard ball went through my window. And there are always decisions one has to ponder over the years. Alfredo Griffin has had a tough time making his mind up on the bases as a member of the Dodgers and in the field as a Toronto Blue Jay. Best attempts in recent years. A valiant effort by the rookie grounds crew in Florida. They missed their mark attempting to cover the infield. And Seattle groundskeeper Alan Cox trying to remove the cat, not his finger. How about these baseball oddities? Foul pop hit behind first base. Don Mattingly can't reach it, but he reaches into the first row for a quick snack. The next day, the young fan received an autographed ball in return. This fan able to reach the souvenir baseball, but pays for it nearly a costly transaction. The Oakland A's ball boy having some trouble finding the baseball. And this proud father using his son and some ingenuity to capture the foul ball, but the youngster decides to throw it back. To the category of the incredible, Kurt Schilling with the base hit to right. Watch the throw by Willie McGee. It is right on target off the helmet. Base hit to right. Paul O'Neill has difficulty coming up with it, so drop kicks it back to the infield. Nice throw, and he's able to hold the runner. Pre-game practice, check out the player on the left. It happens to major leaguers, too. Here's Brett Butler with his son. Listen, don't hurt your daddy, okay, you know? Here's how it looks and sounds in slow motion. Something I'll never forget. I think my wife almost wet her pants when she saw that, and my son uh, was like, come on, Dad, get up, let's go. 
Watch this long drive to right center. Keep an eye on the outfielder, Rodney McCray. And he lived to tell about it. This is the biggest thing happened in my career, besides getting called up, is running through a wall and, and surviving. Stand by. I'm I think I need a little more. Yeah, seconds. get my hands. Four, you know, people see that. People three, see the hands. This is very two, important. Wait, wait, wait a second. One, what's that? What's that light? That's the camera, stupid. I know. Just, just check. I, I think I need a little bit. Just over. Uh, okay. Five, uh, we can roll. Four, wait, I got to memorize. Three, gotta, two. Um, all right. Here are some more Albert Achievement Awards. How was that? Good. Well, football has had its share of embarrassing moments. High school play in West Virginia, Ricky Gross able to pick it off, but he's running the wrong way. He's headed to the wrong end zone. Instead of a touchdown, it's a safety. To Texas high school football, and he is slightly offsides. The Houston Oilers cheerleaders take the field, and she was able to shake it off. More of the wild and the wacky Houston high school football. Now the game is proceeding rather nicely until this owl drops his calling card. Speaking of owls, David Schlegel of the Temple Owls makes the tackle, and this might be described as a sick tackle. After an apparent touchdown, Aris Copeland of Miami celebrates prematurely. It was ruled no TD, so the defensive player answers back. Watch the kickoff to Boise State. They call this play the Globe of Death, an impromptu huddle, and this results in a big run back. How about these fun-loving fans in Kansas, a time-honored tradition, destroying state-owned property? If you're going to take that thing somewhere, please do it carefully, or somebody can get hurt. Here's the NFL version in Buffalo. Stay off the field. To avoid injury, please, off the field. We need the goalposts for playoff action in January. You're reminded, violators can be prosecuted. In the interest of safety, please clear the field. Well, they did, eventually. At a Houston Oilers practice, headman Jack Pardee did not exactly have everything under control. Oklahoma's Barry Switzer dramatically leads his team onto the field. And here are some more knee slappers. Iowa at Michigan State. The pass incomplete, but Ron Hawley of Iowa completes the post pattern and receives congratulations all around. Tulsa running back Ron Jackson with the outside move, and he gets a bit tangled up. High school football in Atlantic City, the long pass batted further downfield to a teammate who takes it in for the touchdown. Check out this celebration. Unfortunately, the guy on the left had no helmet. And hijinks at the Chicago Bears camp. Jim McMahon pulling a fast one on teammate Sean Gale. Yes, lots of horsing around in the world of sports, which leads us to our next category, some infamous moments at the racetrack. Maestro, hit it. First at Remington Park in Oklahoma, the horse on the inside, Benevolent throws his jockey and goes through the rail. Then it's off to the lake for a swim. Also at Remington, they're off, all except for jockey Donnie Knight. Fortunately, he was not injured. At Pimlico, a horse with a big appetite, a between-meal snack. At Laurel in Maryland, Diamond Donnie starts a bit off course, unseats his jockey, and is going nowhere fast. Down the stretch they come, jockey Nate Hubbard hanging on to dear life and second place by a neck. At Hollywood Park, the horse in the lead decides he's had enough. Time to rush back to the barn, perhaps to check out a rerun of Mr. Ed. And at Freehold Raceway in New Jersey, Slandered is on his own course right up the steps into the driver's quarters. And 
track announcers had their moments. They race past the stands into the first turn with Life's Excellence in front. On the outside, equal to none is second as they disappear into the fog. From now on, you're on your own. Pinocchio! Pinocchio puts that nose in front! Smelly's got plenty left for the straightaway. They come for the final eighth of miles. Smelly has a lead. Oh, the sweet, sweet Smelly of success. And Hicka Maka Raka Dakalola. Then there's a gap of three to Dola Hicka Maka Raka Dola. And then it's Dicka Haka Maka Raka Dola. And the trailer is Dola Rola Rola Raka Daka Mola Hola. And then on the outside, that's uh, going away. Just can't pick them up, folks. Around the clubhouse turn they go. Who's in front? I just don't know. You are watching Marv Albert's crack staff, hard at work, carefully scrutinizing all of the comedic footage that has been gathered for the Achievement Awards. And they are scientifically making decisions concerning which material will work. There is absolutely nothing left to chance in this operation. That is a killer. That Hysterical! Oh, now, now, see this. That's subtle humor. This is great stuff. And we continue with the sport of hockey. The Hartford Whalers and the Boston Bruins bringing the game to a complete standstill. Andrew McBain of the Ottawa Senators headed back to the dressing room with a graceful departure. The Rangers trying to tie the game in the final seconds when an exuberant fan tosses a second puck onto the ice and it goes in. Did you ever wonder how many Washington Caps and Los Angeles Kings can fit into a net? NHL goalies are not usually known for their charity, but they've had their moments. Laurie Boschman with the shot. It's inadvertently put in by goaltender Wendell Young. At the NHL All-Star Game, goaltender Ed Belfour fans on the shot, making for an easy score for Mike Gartner. How about these sticky situations? Ed Olchek actually stick handles Troy Murray up the ice. Vladimir Malikov of the Islanders loses his stick to the end board. And Peter Stastny of the Devils has his stick pilfered. Stastny can't believe it. He wants it back and pleads his case as play continues. Unusual moments on the ice. Paul Eisbart shoots one into the crowd right into this man's cup of beer. In minor league hockey, several members of the Muskegon Lumberjacks trying to jumpstart the Zamboni so play can resume. Aaron Turcott minding his own business on the Rangers bench when out of nowhere comes John Cullen of Pittsburgh. And injured Wayne Gretzky on the left, trying to watch the game, but he's somewhat distracted. On to rough stuff and a pinball effect involving the Penguins, Mark Recchi getting the worst of it. Christian Rutu with the unique defensive maneuver, a headlock on Shane Corson. Nick Fatiu and Marty McSawley, slightly ahead of their time, demonstrating a kinder and more gentler NHL. NHL referees also having their problems. One time, Devils coach Doug Carpenter giving the official a piece of his mind in a quiet sort of way. Referee Don Koharski bringing out the best in National Hockey League fans, a very expressive paying customer. And in the category of the incredible, Anton Stastny on the breakaway, but Ope Samuelson pulls out all the stops in his attempt to stop him. NHL executive George Armstrong carefully pondering his next move at the NHL draft. Finally, on the St. Louis Blues bench, here is the human tissue. Uh, what do you think? You want to do the uh, Albert Achievement Awards? Prince Albert? No, no, no. Marv Albert. Marv Albert. That's sorry. a late, late Christmas shopping to do. We're terribly sorry, uh, Merv. Well, I can understand how they feel. It's been a long, tough day for the guys. I can certainly relate to this. Sometimes sports announcers are under a lot of pressure. I'm Ralph Kiner, along with Tim 
And Tim, what's your last name? <laughs> McCarver. <laughs> Tim McCarver. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to New York Yankee Baseball. I'm Bill. Why? why, why <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> what? Look at this crowd. This is horrible. I agree. You got to make the crowd noise today. This game's in the refrigerator. The door is closed. The light's out. The eggs are cooling. The butter's getting hard. And the jello is jiggling. Armour Yager. Feet it across. Here's Lemieux right in front. Makes a little move. Hey, puts that in. Baseball play like a rented mule. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you, you lousy shooter. <laughs> the Yager with a shot. He shoots and scores from the right wing circle. Oh, scratch my back with a hacksaw. The little guard, uh, Aberdovich. Out quickly to the big guy, and now to the lefty. And he lost the ball, but it's picked up in there. Now to the little fella. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm having trouble with the name. They spar together, and they... Work together a lot, and the mouthpiece now out, and it falls right into my bag here at Press Row, and my bag is filled with blood. <laughs> Everything oh. now coming into the ring. Oh, cups of ice, all kind of, I hope, no, oh, big, solid cup of ice just landed in my lap. Ouch. Judy Tenuta's with us tonight. Judy, welcome. Oh, thanks, Tim, you hot stud puppet. <laughs> I, I take it you're a fan of ball players. That's right. I love the way they, I like their tight pants and the way they spin. Yes! Oh, look at that! He's out like a common dog! And this one hit deep to left field by Carlos, and it is gone. Goodbye. Ah, he made, he made the catch. Well, there it goes. Way out of here. No doubt about it. Ah, crap. This game is played so differently today. I mean, it's... The old timers, if they were alive today, would be spinning in the gray. <laughs> and I think Curly of the Three Stooges would have summed up this series by saying, <laughs> Well, that'll do it for tonight. Again, our final score is the Milwaukee Brewers four and the Orioles one. Boston Bruins announcers had a tough time competing for on-camera exposure with this photogenic fan. And after Dominique Wilkins became the all-time leading scorer in Atlanta Hawks history, he went looking for the congratulatory handshake from the broadcast team, which was not offered. So announcers have certainly had their moments, as have those who have attempted to sing our national anthem before sporting events. Actually, some of our best material has been supplied by those who have sung the Star Spangled Banner over the years. It is really a very difficult song to master, as many have discovered. By the dawn's early light. Oh, say, does that star spang get better, yea, way? And the home of the brave. <laughs> Now let's turn our attention to some of the more curious episodes in the world of sports involving news conferences and interviews. It's been quite an experience for television sports reporters who carefully probe the minds of those in the know to get those spontaneous and in-depth responses that will satisfy the fans' need to know what's going on. Sometimes it can be a rough job, but someone's got to do it. Would you like to be a sports reporter for a day? Maybe not after you watch this. We're not holding up okay, the we're game. We're on live floor. TV, sir. Fine. Okay. Shut we'll the be, game. We'll be at 30 the seconds. Off. Okay. No, thank we're you. We're not holding up the game. All right. The umpires are giving us a little heat game. here. Okay. We'll be done okay. in about 30 no, seconds. No, you won't. Nice You'll be done see. now. Okay. I'm going to get thrown out here on opening we night. Security, please. They're calling. Can we get security over here? All right. They're cutting the lights. We got to go. Uh, they want us out of here. All right. The record 25,147. Tommy is closing. Yeah. <laughs> One game tonight in the National Hockey League. <laughs> Joe Klein, wait a minute, I gotta see this. There's no score in the second period, Joe. Let me ask you, is there any, is there any, uh... Colorado is number one in the nation in college football. Unbeaten Buffaloes will meet Notre Dame 
in the orange bowl. And now I got shaving creamed, and now I'm getting iced, and Don Baylor, you've been down this road many times before. Oh, jeez. I'm going to keep doing this because people want to hear from you, Don. You need a war <laughs> But you've been down... Oh, this road's so... I can't even talk. Yeah, go ahead. Just say whatever you want. Do it. His name is Arnie, and he doesn't like the working press. Ah! Oh, yeah. oh man! Reporter Paul Waffle chatting away with pitcher Joe Swisarski. Watch out for the fly ball, Paul. And I yelled, "You ducked!" Luckily, you ducked. It might have hit you dead square in the head instead of the back of the neck. So. Uh... At first, it was kind of dangerous, but after I saw you were all right, it was kind of funny. <laughs> Continuing with our media segment, let's check out some moments that may have passed you by, but not our crack staff. And we begin with Super Bowl week 1981, when Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver Charlie Smith was the subject of a, a penetrating interview, despite the fact that his broken jaw was wired shut. He showed the heat in the room, but you know, I mean, like, he's gonna watch me practice this week, you know. If he say I'm ready to go, then I'm going to do the best I can and pray that, you know, I can make a contribution to the team. What do you want for Christmas? Um, my two front teeth. Will he be okay, you think, for the trip? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and when they have children, I hope their children has a good attitude toward the University of, of, um, Or <laughs> the University of Oregon. Um, That's okay, Coach. Yes. No, no, I no, hell no, I uh, no. Yes. Marcus, it strikes me as a little bit crazy, but you come in here and you jump right into a scrimmage and you jump right into goal line, but you came ready to play. Yeah, you know, it's a big. You can't get them in if you don't get them on. I'd rather get them on and not get them in than not get them on and not get them in. We haven't been able to win games at home, and we haven't been able to win games on the road. And my problem as the general manager is I can't figure out any other place to play the game. It's like you don't win if you don't have more points than the other team, right? Is that how it works? I think. I don't know. I don't know a lot about sports. That's why I'm in the band. They just play well tonight. It was their night today. Bobby had a lot of problems uh, physically. He had, uh, uh, he had diarrhea. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how. Is there another word you say? Yes, there is, Coach. He's the player that can that can deal off of the um, pick and roll, and he makes passes. So we get a lot more out of him. He's 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 arrived. Okay. <laughs> he's arrived. <laughs> what would you like to ask yourself? What would the right questions be today for Magic Johnson? Uh, why am I here talking to you? <laughs> if I had to kind of use a word. To try to express it, be like super calum, fragilistic, espialidosis. And if you can understand what that means, that's what this fight means to me. George Foreman against Larry Holmes? Uh, it should be promoted by the WWF and held in a pig pen. Those guys are both fat, out of shape, boring, sloppy, and I don't know who really wants to see it. As a veteran, do you, do you like hold? I mean, do you, can you hold a guy without. Yeah, you know, there's certain techniques you hold, like inside tight here. You don't want to get him outside the plane. That's why he's a, they can't really catch him. All right, now, up. if he starts to move, I mean, do you, like, like let go if I move him? So, no, if he starts moving, I just rip this like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Keith, there are three things that the defense now is not allowed to use against the offense, which takes away some of the, some of the stuff that you guys can do. You want to show me the three things? Yes. That are not legal. Hands in the face mask. That one? That Grabbing one. those face masks. Yeah. Head yeah. slap. You told me you weren't going to hurt me. Well. Oof. Ah. I have bars in here. God. What I want to do, do, I want to swing a golf club. Um, I want to... Um, I want to raise sheep. It isn't absolutely necessity, I don't think, to have that happen. It would... It's a bad start. Ah! There she is. Marlena Dietrich is with us. <laughs> Our silent partner. We got a couple guys from the ACC in this team. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait a second here. <laughs> oh. 
Now watch this off the foul pop. Yankee pitcher Chuck Carey collides with Steve Balboni. Here's Carey the next day. Chuck, tell us what you remember now that you're feeling so much better. Chuck. Well, while Chuck is uh, clearly expressing how he felt about what happened in Detroit yesterday, we thought we could take a look at the collision once again. Chuck, if you can remember, just talk about what happened here. Chuck. Chuck, how are you feeling today, seriously? <laughs> Very nice job. I got a headache. I got a, I got a blistering headache. We move on to some unique award presentations, starting with Portland Trailblazer executive Harry Glickman. Ladies and gentlemen, the all-time scoring record for the Portland Trailblazers was 9,702... Uh, 9,000s. This is not great pride. We took great pride. Coming from Larry, it means a lot to me. Maybe it doesn't mean a lot to me. Huh? Okay, anything else that we have to do here? Yeah, Tom, one more thing. Marv Albert's asking for you to do an introduction to his Albert Achievement Awards. What? Those, those wild and wacky things that he does every year? He wants me to do one of those? That's it. No, that's, I don't want to do that. Listen, uh, tell Marv, tell him I'm going to the fights with Margaret Thatcher. He'll believe anything. I think we're on the right track. We are really rolling. Let's check out some more of the embarrassing and the bizarre. Which at times was in evidence at the Olympics. And we begin with some inauspicious moments from the opening ceremonies. Here is Brunei. They send a delegation only of officials no athletes, hoping perhaps to medal in the buffet event. And they're calling for Hercules. Extremely low body fat for Hercules <laughs> these days. Now to the competition. The Olympic boxing referee awaiting word from ringside on the decision. These two young fighters, their boxing careers hanging in the balance, and the ref has no idea who won this bout. Still no clue. Finally, the verdict. In wrestling, the participants get up close and personal with the official who goes down for the count. Daly Thompson on the approach, and this not what he had in mind. Now check out the mental preparation required in the weightlifting event. He's still getting ready. What concentration. All right, he is finally ready. <laughs> nice try. Aduche Ohari shows it's all in the form. How about this shining moment for the Olympic cyclist? This boxer can hardly contain his excitement. We conclude this segment with a classic from the 1981 Olympic Festival, gymnast Brian Meeker. I think it's more painful for other people, especially the first time you see it. It might be remembered for something that wasn't you know, that great of a of an event, but it's something that people have had a lot of fun with and I've had a lot of fun with. I guess I have the most famous gymnastics scratch. Dave. Hate to bug you. Hey, Marv, how you doing? Good, that first lead in How's did. the video going? Oh, great. Good. The first lead in you did worked so well. You really, you, you enjoyed it? it? One more? Are you sure, what do you want? Anything you say, anything works. Hey, here's some more of Marv's damn sports bloopers. That is great. What proper tone. Yeah, Thanks. great. I appreciate it. Anytime, Marv. Yeah, is this security? <laughs> yeah, that's Dave Letterman. Let, let me tell you something. You let Marv Albert up here again, and I'll kill you. I'm serious. I know who you are. I know where you live. I'll kill you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You let him in here one more time, you're a dead man. Guess what? I'm talking to a dead man. Do you understand me? Once more. You're a ghost. Okay, bye-bye. 
for our final segment. We start with golf, and this shot by Chichi Rodriguez. It's a good one, but a, a slight problem. It is stolen by a beagle. Mike Ditka with a swing and a miss. And apparently, he'll need some new equipment. From Mike Sullivan, this is fourth shot on 15. Persistence does not pay off for Mike, but he'll keep trying. George Archer teeing off. How about this simultaneous reaction by the gallery? More unusual occurrences on the links. Watch this shot slightly off course. In a celebrity tournament, Franz Klammer headed for the water. This just as he planned. How about this young golfer practicing in the backyard? The home video camera smashed. So what do I tell mom and dad? Holy Boxing has had its moments at Madison Square Garden. Keith Roberts with the swing and a miss. He knocked himself out with that one. Bazooka Lamone will try anything to get the upper hand, including pulling down the trunks of Sean Bay Mitchell. Larry Holmes with a punch we still haven't seen. An incredible phantom punch by Holmes. He never touched him. Referees have their problems. Final seconds of the round. The ref Terry Moore with a bit of a mishap. In Memphis, a wild scene. Referee Sam Garland steps in to separate the fighters. Johnny Hitman Alfred objects, goes after the ref, and all breaks loose. Some astounding knockdowns in Golden Gloves action. How about this double knockdown? Now, I don't think you're ever going to see this again in boxing, folks. Wow. Never say never because Pete Van Oss and Patrick Shea also combined on a double knockdown. Now, check out this scene in England. The woman who enters the ring with the shoe is boxer Tony Wilson's mom, upset that her son lost on a disqualification. On to tennis where Yvonne Lendl can't seem to get the attention of the official. Andre Agassi offers a handshake to the umpire then as a change of heart. And we conclude with more mirthful moments for the world of sports. Nice way to spend an afternoon until this unexpected delay of a canoe landing on a rock. Ben Johnson crossing the finish line and the pylon barrier. Gymnast Trent Dimas on the approach, slightly off the mark. Here's figure skater Midori Ito skating into trouble during the warm-ups. She was able to compete, but did not fare much better. And some fans seem to take matters into their own hands. This fan, safe at second, so makes his way to third during a play stoppage in Vancouver. This fan in complete hockey attire shoots and scores that he's quickly escorted to the penalty box where he no doubt received a two minute penalty and a summons. This track and field enthusiast needs to work on his form, especially with stadium security and hot pursuit. And this happy patron is not anxious to return the basketball. One final look at the wild and wacky. Off the foul pop down the line and right. Watch closely as Tom Brunaski had his pocket pick. Some people will do anything to get on camera. And we recommend that you don't try this at home. Baby balancing at the ballpark. Some more advice. Never fall asleep at the ball game for fear of a dead attack. And this young fan is hungry, so he simply pulls a piece of popcorn out of his ear. It's an emotional time for Marvin and his staff. The Albert Achievement Awards home video is nearly complete. The result of many long, demanding hours and sleepless nights. A remarkable demonstration of teamwork and inspirational leadership. 
So once again, you people have shown me what fellow man can do when the creative juices are flowing. Thank you so much. And now, a behind-the-scenes look at the making of the Albert Achievement Awards. So I'm going to be talking to Czar. Okay. Anyway, I thought the graphics were very good. Czar? Czar? Popcorn! No, no, see, he's screwing it up. No, 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 don't do that. No, you, you got to be... I can't do that. No, no, no. You got to... No, no, no. When you send the report back to me, would you just say, now, back to my best friend, Marv Albert. Well, why don't you try it? Have you seen my game show? Well, why don't you try it? Tell me again the line. <laughs> See, he's wasting your time. I'm a busy person. I'm a star. And don't disturb me. Charles, uh, let me get this straight. Up. Are you saying no? Okay, very nice. Are you happy with that one, Mark? You know, I thought I was very good in that one. I thought. <laughs> Well, you should. You, you screwed up the first time. Uh, we're doing this Albert Achievement Awards. When you video. say we, who are we talking about? Uh, my staff. Yeah, yes. A lot of money? A lot of money there, Marv? Uh, uh, it's, uh, are we looking know, at Easy little, Street now, Marv? Uh, Moving those videos? Uh, what do you think? Discuss that. Okay. Are you having trouble with your hearing? Did you not hear me say, I'm busy? I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I just thought it would be something you might, you know, want to take part in. Yeah, maybe I would, but right now, I got things to do. You're supposed to say, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> now we turn our attention to some of the more curious episodes in the world of sports and, uh, no. Well, we've just seen, uh, well, we've seen. Let's check out now some of the embarrassing and bizarre. I want to do that again. That was not, not good. Oh, give me a few more, boys. See that? See this? Sitting right on the edge. Oh, nice. Just don't right. sit on this. Yeah. <laughs> now, my crack staff has compiled. Do it again. Uh, I want to do one more time. All right, do one more time. So, do the whole thing again one more time? Yeah, do it again. Do it one more time, just for kicks? No, no, I. No. Hell no, I. No. 